people's work are likely to become redundant. And in that case, what is the government currently doing to make sure that though we have more digitalization, people are not going to be unemployed and there will be something else for them to do? Thank you. Can you Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Abigail. Uh, you you uh, survived all the challenges. <laughs> you know, this is a great question that Abigail has asked about the link between digitalization and joblessness. And I've always said that there is a very big difference between a developing country like Ghana and the more advanced economies when we come to talk about the impact of digitalization on jobs. I believe, and, 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 I, and, and the data seems to show, and I talked about some of the That's working now? I think so, it's working. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, my name is um, Seth Safo. I am an academic at the um, School of Mathematical Sciences at Legon. Um, I'm into mathematical finance and analytics. Now, I have a question, but it is a form of uh, a prescription to the Vice President. Now, um, data is about people, and data has value socioeconomic impacts of policies we make. Now, just imagine um, you had a tool which allowed you to see the impact of your policies before you put them in place. Okay. Now, 
I'm actually prescribing here that will you mind a proposal to support a center of excellence for data science and analytics um, in an institution like um, the University of Ghana, specifically at the math department, <laughs> where <laughs> yes, where we um, you will be sharing um, in knowledge creation in sort of um, disseminating sort of government policies through the education of um, the youth and also getting the requisite skills as we move forward. We are now going to be creating data, but we need the expertise to actually derive and de leverage what the data will be bringing us. And I want you to consider this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I think that you, you have hit really the nail on the head. We are putting together all this data, but we cannot allow the data to just sit there. Uh, data without being able to analyze the data doesn't really produce any information. But we want informative data. And this is why I was telling you that having put together all this data, our next uh, step now going forward is to see how we can apply data analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and so on to be able to have some information coming out of the data. And Seth is proposing that we look at um, his department and collaborate to set up a center of excellence. And they may be able to help us build a very analytical uh, framework to be able to tell us what the impact of certain policies would be. Now, I'm very, very excited about that, Seth. And I think that uh, when we leave here, uh, make an appointment to see me, and we can have a discussion. Yeah. Hello. Um, Next question on the right. I think it's a great honor to listen to all the pantheon of elements that have been put in place to make sure that our economy is being digitalized. I only have a question. Um, according to the Global Broadband and Innovations Program, Less than 5% of rural inhabitants in our country have access to internet. Then also, about only, um, about only 19% of men in our country use internet, with about 9% of women in, on the internet. My question is that um, we know that driving our economy through uh, digitali uh, digitalization would need a lot of people being on the internet specifically. I want to know if there is um, any initiative that uh, is being put in place to make sure that a lot of people now get access to internet, especially the older people of our economy, so that they can also get onto the internet and then participate in this digitalization. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. You've raised a very important issue, and it has to do with the digital divide in our, in our country. You have um, the rural areas who don't, where internet penetration is clearly low. As we, I mentioned during my remarks that overall, internet penetration has increased from around 26% to 50%, but we still have a lot more to do in the rural areas. So we have a specific project that the Ministry for Communications and Digi Digitalization is implementing that is focused on internet penetration in the rural areas. And we, therefore, we are hoping to bridge the gap in that context. Beyond that, I think if you look at all the digitalization projects that we are trying to do, we want to make sure that people who don't have smartphones and therefore don't have internet connectivity um, and don't have smartphones or internet connectivity who are, are still able to access services through USSD code so that you dial some star hash hash number and then you can go through and get your service. But ultimately, the, the, the idea for us is to make sure that internet penetration goes across the country, both the rural and the urban areas, so that the rural people together with Cookie, Cookie from, T from Media General TV3 and of course uh, Abdul Hai Moumen from GBC I am MFA Pao, Joy News, Joy FM
Yeah, Omar Asanda, the darling boy, is here with us. And then uh, MFA Apao, evergreen, that's how I call her. And Moomen, ever present. Uh, he's always present, somewhere, somehow, on television. He's like empty and, and everywhere you go. Yes, and, 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 the, and the beautiful cookie, also here uh, with us. Uh, and the humble Wilberforce. That's why. <laughs> All right, so the, the vice president has said several things, uh, several pointers. Omaro, uh, you had your take earlier on, but since we are back now, a quick wrap up on some of the things that you pointed out. What I would think is that the National Identification Authority should have district assembly offices. We have 265 districts in the country. Each district of assembly office should have a small office like we have for the other agencies where I can walk in and do the Ghana card registration if I fail to take part in the mass registration. But that's not happening. That's absent. Again, those who have been registered, not everybody have their card. I have my card, but I know so many people who don't have their cards. And when I spoke to the NIA, we were told that their cards are there, but they are now applying for offices in the district assembly so that they can go in. And they said they are going to use the GRA as a delivery point for the cards. And I thought that these were things that we should have planned before we started the work. Be that as it may, these cards must go in quickly. We are told children are going to have their Ghana card number at birth. It's exciting, but if I look at the challenges with the Ghana card for adults, I start wondering whether... Uh, the children are really going to get it as the government is promising. So these are the, the, the things that I, w I would raise initially, and, and that's what a cynic would do. And uh, every now and then, the cynic in me would jump out, and that's what I'm looking at. But it's progressive, it's good, but these are things that we, shall, we should deal with. All right. So, MFA, when the vice president was speaking, I, I tried to make some notes, and I, I gathered that he talked about the introduction of the Ghana card, uh, to uniquely identify every citizen, which is what um, Sander has been talking about. He talked about the introduction of the digital address system. And these are like five pillars that um, he identified. So the, the Ghana card, the addressing system, the introduction of the interoperability mobile money payment system, the digital payment platform, which is the Ghana.gov platform, and also the introduction of the QR code. These are like five pillars that he tends to talk about. Uh, your, your thoughts on these five pillars and some of the things that he said about them. And then he puts it also under some broad uh, thematic areas also, which included efficient public service delivery yes. and curbing corruption as well. And then the property system that you talk about goes on to give data. Because like uh, Umaro said earlier, uh, there will be a lot of fact checking going on uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, because um, listening carefully, there are issues and there are some questions that uh, are raised, even though um, tremendous, uh, you know, uh, results have been seen since we started this. For instance, in 2017, he talks about the fact that uh, we've been able to register with a tin uh, from 4% to 85% uh, when we started this digitization drive. That's interesting, but we need to check if indeed that's what it is and then uh, the issue about the revenue mobilization i was hoping to hear more in terms of how much exactly we have been able to make since the introduction of this particular system because we know about the the, the ports the paperless ports amongst others the ghana.gov um, he mentioned that people are now receiving their passports in their homes and i'm yet to see that i'm yet to hear anybody say that they've received their passport they've gone through the process the biometrics and everything so, so and it's what, been what, delivered to them so what it is is that mm -hmm. the process is such that you can opt for uh, 
delivery. Okay. And so I know it's more like we, posted to you. I know we have a premium system, yeah. but I didn't know that now it can be delivered to you uh, from the passport office wherever you are. But it, it, it remains to be seen if indeed some people are experiencing it already. Is it that you have to pay more for that to happen? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll have to uh, fact check that going forward but really uh, the issue about our children now going to get the attend uh, their uh, Ghana cards numbers once they are born and I'm told that uh, laptops and uh, resources have been deployed already to the Ghana Health Service for that to happen that's um, laudable but we have to check also whether indeed that's what is happening so um, some of these things that I've heard him say I think it's um, it's in it's an order and then also the road getting to uh, Ashesi University uh, <laughs> procurement. Uh, the road needs to be place. digitized there. Yes, it has to be digitized. Absolutely. Digitalized Di exactly. Well. Yeah. So uh, we'll see um, how that goes. And then um, before we started, I was saying that I was hoping that this lecture or far side conversation, because it's not a lecture, I'm told, would not be heavily politicized as we've seen in the past but um, i can i can say i don't know about others who have watched but i think that it wasn't heavily politicized i think i didn't hear uh, the, the, the mention of ndc anywhere i think um I, I didn't see any party politicking in this regard. At least we are looking at the national agenda. We're hoping we could get to a point where we can talk about national development, the economy, without politicizing anything. At least giving a, a praise where it is due and then criticizing where it is due so that we can move forward as a nation, knowing that our future generations are here watching and trying to emulate from our leaders. So, so far, I think that we'll leave it here for now uh, in terms of my observations. Tomorrow, we'll continue the yeah, discussion. <laughs> I, I was going to ask you, maybe I should, yeah. and, and that is that, do you think that, you know, when we were going ahead to do election 2020, there was this accord that was signed wanting to have peace is it and a all peace that kind accord? of thing? I, I'm thinking that, <laughs> and maybe all of us can take, have a take on that. Do you think that we should get to the point where this issue about digitization or digitalization as a country, we decide that we are snatching it away from the this politicians, kind of politicians the and even politics. this current government because we need to and take making a place it a in national the world. issue mm -hmm. yeah. so that we say that even at the time of elections we get our politicians to commit to the fact that whoever wins the election wherever we are with the digitization process when you come to office you will continue from there but, but make we should every get to a point where we don't need to bind our politicians to do what is right for us as a nation because they know that this ought to be the case why would i start a project you come you leave it when you know that this is what will give us a place in the world without digitization we are just here and we are working like we are on an island we won't get anywhere so in the beginning i'm sure we're all listening when i asked honorable upon Kruma if there is um a, a, an agenda or something documented so just like yes, you're yes. saying to be able to make sure that there's a progression of all these interventions it, whether there's a change in government or not and you have the answer that he gave that well it's a democratic society that we are in so if party a comes they can determine if they want to continue or not and and i had a little problem with that one because there must be a ghana agenda there must be something that we are so like you're saying let's all there should be a pact that we should all sign that whether it's party a or party b we are all making sure that there's a progression with all these interventions now when when um, um the vice president was speaking he said this these intervention interventions or digitalization digitization is a youth revolution that's what he said now if you understand the word revolution it's a forceful overthrow of a system that has existed for a very long time so if we are forcefully overthrowing an old system then of course we all must sign a pact that listen it's not just the youth who must make sure that they drive these interventions our politicians who are seeking our thumbs on on the 7th of December every four years must make sure that if we vote for you and we put you in government you don't come and tell me that since it was um, the MP people who started all these interventions you are NDC and you think that when you come you, when you come into power you don't think that is important to continue this and that so then what happens to the funds that have been invested in making sure that these interventions were running so for me my take home I love the fact that he said it was a youth revolution so it means that okay anything that you start with a youth I expect it to last because of course we are the future leaders but are you creating the conducive environment for this forceful takeover of an old system number one number two 
are you even bringing yourselves to be accountable tomorrow so that we can ask you that okay so these interventions that were started so so and so many many years ago what has happened what's the progression and all the loopholes and all the lapses that were found what have you done will they bring themselves into our books of accountability that's my question okay moment so you have the, the floor yes um, um i i was excited when the the vice president you know when he began he did indicate mm -hmm. that if you fail to digitalize your economy, you are bound to fail as an economy. And um, I was excited when he linked that to the fact that the GRA in particular was also going through the digitalization process, especially in respect of tax payments and so on. Um, the, the current system, as it stands, uh, discourages people who would otherwise have naturally loved to pay their taxes. It discourages such persons from paying their taxes. Uh, a newly registered company, you go in, uh, there's a contract coming up, you need a tax clearance certificate. The system uh, as uh, what requires it, uh, yeah, yes, but but um, yeah, but what, what I'm talking about, I mean, the, the current system before the digitalization was that you would have to pay. Uh, you would have to go and uh, go through the process of paying tax when you haven't even end after registering that company. But I think that with this new introduction of technology and digitalization, that is bound to, to, to change and that will encourage a lot more people. Again, to think of the fact that you have to leave your space and look, uh, travel to some office when you have businesses to attend to, all those were factors that discourage people from you know, uh, paying taxes. But now you can just open your phone and go ahead with the process but again i was a little disappointed because i failed to see or hear the vice president talk about one of the very critical areas which is the uh, justice delivery system in the country I, I didn't hear the digitalization process in respect of the justice delivery system so for example we know that police officers arrest people uh the people they put them on remand and then we are told that they, their dockets cannot be found and if dockets cannot be found and you know even you have been reporting from the court for example there are uh, there is a system there is, a, there, there is the Justice for All program ongoing at the moment. Why do we even have a Justice for All program? Because people have been in remand for as long as five years, some ten years, and, and, and their cases haven't been heard simply because the docket is missing. What are we doing about that? Are we, each of us here, even the Vice President himself, God forbid, could find himself in a situation where he would, find, he would be in a, in a prison cell, uh, should... should the dockers get missing. What then happens? I didn't hear much Case will about. Hopefully not get missing. <laughs> but I didn't hear much about uh, the justice delivery system and what is being done to digitalize that system and that sector as well. Because I find that it is equally as important as all the other areas that we spoke about. Yes. I think it would be a for me not to make an intervention. Mm. Okay. And that's because I know a little bit of what's happening in the judicial mm. system. So there is a, a e justice system yeah. which has been launched by government and also by the judicial service. It's heavily supported by some funding agencies. My, 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 my analysis an e -cabinet is, system is also. based on the conversation, the, the presentation that has been made here. Right. And so I'm looking at what the vice president may consider as priority. And since the justice delivery system was not mentioned, I'm asking myself, does it not maybe, form maybe part of its priority areas? The, fact that the justice system was left out because mm. there, is, there is a digitization effort ongoing there. Mm. Um, even the bar association itself mm. has linked itself to that system. And so I know that the bar association has two websites. One for lawyers to mm -hmm. log in to be able to access their cases file their witness statements uh, and all those kind of things for the purposes of justice mm. and adjudication. So yeah. there's some kind of process, but right. probably just an yes. oversight uh, uh, for the presentation. Alright, well, well, and it's a very important observation that you made. Let me quickly add that I'm, however, very excited that uh, and Omaru and the MFR have said that fact checkers will be working tomorrow. If indeed the fact checking does prove the figures given by the vice president right, then I will be super excited at the fact that more than half of this country's population have now been registered on the Ghana card. For me, that is good news, but it remains to be seen yeah. if the figures are yeah. correct. But, but the Ghana card issue, the, beyond the registrations, there is an issue about the people who have registered.
registered, the cards have been printed, but they are not in line. Now, we know that before you pick your card, you go through a verification process. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that you haven't gone through your card, what it means is that the process is not completed. Right. Because the card has not been verified before it is given to you. So, so in your estimation, what does the 15 million that he talked yes. about represent? Yes, because if What's important is you have registered 15 million, but we need to know whether, we need to know how many people have gone through. Actually received their cards. Mm. Yeah. When I got my card, I went through the process, they issued the card. At the time of taking the card, I went through a verification process to receive the card for it to become my own. So until you go for the card and complete that verification process, you have not received your card. Mm. And so it is a challenge that I think we need to get the statistics about we have certificates, yes. So I can say that, okay, based on the election data, 11 million people may have their cards in their hands. But what it means is that there are 4 million who have been gone their cards who are not using Yes. Okay, so, um, yes. Yes, um, what about for, so for me, um, in all of these, the digital address system is something that the government has been touting and celebrating. But how often do you open your Ghana Post you know, app, for instance, if you're going to a location, we always use Google Map. People always ask for Google Map location. And even if they give you the Ghana Post or GPS uh, code, how often do you use that? I am happy it's been deployed. They've put a plate in front of my gate. Mm. Uh, I was in a home. I came home and they had come to count and they put... Um, I can't tell you that on national TV. <laughs> but they have come to put it there. And, and that, that is good, but I think there should be a software that supports what we have pasted on people's doors and gates. That's what I'm saying. Okay. All right. So, um, I don't know if anybody has any... The e-digital e -digital currency was also mentioned. We are told it's yet to be adopted, but I look forward to it. I'm told it's not a cryptocurrency, but we'll see how we're going to be able to implement that. And I'm told that already uh, the men are complaining about the momo uh, because it's become too easy <laughs> for you to send uh, uh, money. Uh, uh, we, we are being signal to wrap up now, uh, uh, so we need to we need to wrap up. Uh, uh, yes. Wrapping up, I'll say that the integration of all these things, so that passports, voters' ID card. Uh, Net car, all those things become one card, which is the Ghana card. It's, it's the future. That's what we it's have. extremely yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and to right. vote with it as well. Yeah. Since it's, it's exactly. becoming a passport. And I'm just hoping Since that it's becoming we do a not passport. politicize this conversation. Yeah. By all means, let us criticize, let us critique the, the, the presentation, but let's make it non political as possible. And let, so and let's make it a Ghana agenda. Exactly. Ghana exactly. Yes. 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 All right. So, and hold people accountable. So my name is Roman Sasari. I work with Asasi Radio. My colleagues starting from Omaru. Um, Omaru Sanda Amado City FM and City TV. I am MFA Paul. Join News, Joy FM. Many thanks for your company. My name is Abdul Hai Moomin. I work with the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. It's been exciting coming your way. Cookie T, Media General, TV3, co-host of our morning show, TV3, New Day. It's been a pleasure doing this with you guys. Yeah. yeah. So, together with all my colleagues, we thank you very much, B, for the privilege of your company. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Representatives here.